Okay, hi everybody. So similarly to Ohad, I'll be separating shallow and, and many layered networks. And uh, fortunately, we have uh, complementary theorems. So it's not like a weird thing. So uh, the basic story is the same. Because we know that with subspaces of reasonable bases, we can fit any continuous function, somebody at some point has to make an argument on why you would use any other class of functions. So I'll motivate that. And then I will give one such separation result. This one will be different. I will not show an exponential separation for two and three layers based on dimension. It'll be an exponential separation based on how many layers you add. And the argument is also fortunately different. The argument is just a counting argument on oscillations in one dimension. So, so here's one way to describe a subspace based on some basis set G. And for a long time, people wanted to analyze how expressive these are. So for instance, if we have our base set be mono monomials, so products of primitive variables, then uh, it's been known by Weierstrass from 1885 that these are, are dense instead of continuous functions. Stone then generalized this, and you can use this theorem to prove kind of quickly and nicely that single layer neural networks can fit any continuous function as well. So like I was saying, why would you ever bother with anything else? By the way, is this clock here correct? Okay. Just right. uh, okay. So now, so let me just put that up again. So we have basis functions and we take linear combinations. So why should we feel so restricted? Why don't we do something else? So why don't we use our basis functions as the composition rule as well? So I have basis functions and I can apply basis functions to basis functions. So you can call this a neural net if you want, but uh, it's just a more general way of constructing function classes. So the reason this could be nice is if for f some nice family of functions that you care about a lot, we have a much more compact set of representations. For me, the core intuition is actually uh, non-mathematical. I just ask you, if you were to write a computer program, would you want to be restricted to never invoking function call? How long would the program be? So um, you can think of the nestings as the depth. And the nesting and the depth is here. So uh, like I said, I'll do it for, for depth. I'll say how depth helps. And um, you just saw Ahad's very nice talk. There's a whole session of these. There's uh, a nice paper by Daniel Kane and, and Ryan Williams for linear threshold functions that's pretty recent. There's some product networks. There's just, and there's more and more of these coming up on archive. And uh, all of them eventually will converge to some result that says for natural functions. So for all the stuff people actually care about. If, if such a thing is true. That's what we'd really like to get at. Okay, so let me go through the theorem. And uh, for maybe the only time in my life, I can actually give all the real numbers. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. So we'll have a parameter k. So we'll have a function class that's shallow and is not very expressive that's parameterized by some number k. So we have this k-layered thing, dimension d, and some parameters that will describe the complexity of the network alpha beta. These will be kind of nuisance parameters. So SK is our shallow networks, shallow for S, and it'll contain two things. One is K layer networks with at most two to the K nodes, and these will be something I call semi-algebraic gates. These basically was a reverse engineered class of functions. They have the ReLU that, that he talked about. They have max, so max of many things. So it's not just a, some univariate function composed with affine. We have all sorts of functions. And I chose this function class because it can do the ReLU, it can do convolution, it can do a lot of the standard things people care about. And just to kind of trash on other parts of my life and other research fields, I threw in uh, boosted decision trees. So we can say boosted decision trees also have some trouble. So that's SK, and now we're gonna fix, we're gonna construct a function F, which has a much smaller description length. So we're in K cubed, layers and nodes, polynomial, and the distance between any one of these shallow functions and this small function is at least 60, 1 over 64 in the L1 distance on the cube. Okay. So there's this, this shallow set of functions, and um, there's a shallow set of functions, and none of them can approximate this, this very small uh, many-layered function. And again, k is a free parameter, so that's the difference with OHADs. But I don't have a I wish there was a good dimension dependence here. Okay, so let's go to the proof. So like I said, it's just an oscillation counting argument. So the first part of the argument says that a shallow function cannot have many oscillations, and with 
layers, what I can do is I can construct a very highly oscillatory, very regular function. And this will imply the L1 distance is large. So let's go through this argument. So G has few oscillations. I'll isolate some region where there's a pretty wide oscillation. Pigeonhole, there's got to be a bunch of these. And if I look at this region, because the other one's highly oscillatory, it's going to have a bunch of oscillations in that region. And that means half of them are going to have to point the wrong way. And because it's regular, the L1 distance is bounded below by one half of the area of that. And since it's regular, I can compute that. So I can just bound the distance between these two functions by just a triangle computation. So that's that implication. Now I have to show that I can construct G and F. So or it's, let me correct that. I have to construct F. I have to show that all the other G are, are the shallow G are not uh, very highly oscillatory. So the highly oscillatory G, or highly oscillatory F, it's very easy to construct. So this sigma R is the ReLU function, which Ohad explained to us. And if you just use three of them, you can make a triangle. So now the question is, what happens when you compose a triangle with a triangle? Well, let's just do it. So we'll just push through the definition. The definition says, look at the part that's bigger than half. Flip it, double it. And if I would like to, I can do it again. And every time I do it, I double the number of peaks. So with k layers, I get 2 to the k minus 1 peaks from a single one. So it's that easy. So here's my regular highly oscillatory function. Uh, and so the final piece of the argument is to say that we do not have many oscillations if we have shallow functions. And I'll just say briefly that uh, I, sh I showed this argument to Peter Bartlett, and he pointed out it's a consequence of VC. So if you're familiar with VC arguments, then it's also fairly intuitive for the same reason that, v that neural networks have polynomial uh, VC dimension in the depth and the number of parameters, that the number of, you know, because we're checking crossings. So it's equivalent to looking at the sign patterns. So, but well, there's a quick way to look at it, which we're talking about these ReLUs. We care about the affine combinations and the compositions. If we have a function which has piecewise affine, and I add two of the pieces together, or two of these piecewise affine functions together, I just have to sort all the change points where one switches the pieces and the other switches the pieces. So that just adds the complexities together. And the point is that adding functions together slowly increases the complexity, additively increases the complexity, composing them multiplicatively increases the complexity. So you get a bound that says that the complexity has the number of layers in the exponent, but the, no, the width in the, uh, in the base of the exponent. So that's the inequality we want. And you just do some induction. I'll just say briefly that this class, semi-algebraic, I originally felt it was kind of a, a weakness, that it was just a technical kind of lame thing. Uh, but because there's been so much attention on polynomials recently, I'll just kind of thought maybe it's kind of interesting. So all it is is we take space, we divide it into regions that are defined by the level sets of polynomials. And then within each one of these, we say a polynomial. So the, the decision rule for such a function is you find which partition of this, uh, find which partition you element you're in, you compute the polynomial, and you make the output. And even though this sounds really complicated, it basically doesn't have, it's a low complexity object, the VC dimension doesn't really depend on almost anything. It's kind of, kind of strange. So this was a this was a useful construction. Okay. So that's it.